Hey everybody, welcome to Vacuum Wars. This week I took five of the most popular six and a half horsepower wet dry vacuums and put them through all kinds of tests to find out which was the best and which was the best value, which in this case ended up being the same one. So links in the description and let's get started. First, you should know that wet-dry vacuums typically come in different sizes and power ratings. For example, a couple years ago, I did a similar test but for smaller wet-dry vacuums, but for this video, I wanted to test the most powerful wet-dry vacuums, and so all of these have a 6.5 horsepower rating, the most powerful rating that many of these companies offer. They all have a few things in common. For example, they all have the same hose length at 7 feet. They all have the same cord length at 20 feet. They all use two and a half inch attachments, which means you can order different types of attachments online fairly easily, as long as they are two and a half inches. And as I said, they are all six and a half horsepower. The horsepower rating does not mean they all have the same airflow and suction power though. And before I go through those numbers, I should comment that they were all pretty powerful. For example, the average upright vacuum has around 83 CFM of airflow at the hose, where the average score I tested on these wet dry vacuums was 197 CFM at the hose more than double the power of an average upright vacuum. I took their suction number and their airflow number and combined them for a power score and found that the Craftsman had the most power, followed by the Rigid and the Workshop. This also seemed consistent with the Heavy Debris Test, where the Craftsman was able to pick up the heaviest nuts and bolts, and conversely, the Vacmaster 16 Gallon, which had the lowest power score, did the worst on that test. One very good reason to own a wet-dry vac is for picking up water, and so it's critical to have a good water attachment, such as a wide squeegee tool with two extensions which they all had, though I found that the squeegee tool that the two VacMasters used were not well designed, in my opinion, and it was difficult to remove the water from the floor with them when compared to the Rigid, the Craftsman, and the Workshop, which all did much better with this test, though I would say that the Rigid was the best, with the Craftsman a very close second. Another important test was with debris on hard floors. Here I was thinking of sawdust and other fine material on shop floors, and again, attachment design was critical. Each vacuum had two options for this job. The first was the water squeegee tool, which worked exceptionally well with the Rigid, the Craftsman, and the Workshop, but not well at all with the two Vacmasters, where the holes on the squeegees were too small for the vermiculite. The other tool they all had for this was a kind of utility tool, which would be better for this job if you also had large bits of debris to get, but it wasn't quite as easy to control, since it was prone to getting stuck on the floor if you didn't maintain a bit of a space between it and the floor, and here they were all about the same. Another important test is their ability to clean cars. And for me, this is a simple question. Do they have what I call a claw tool, but some people call a car tool or not? It's pretty much the most used tool in car detailing. And here again, the Rigid, Craftsman, and Workshop had one and all did about the same. And the VacMasters did not come with a claw tool. And thus I had to use the utility tool, which was suboptimal. The VacMaster Beast 14 gallon with the steel tank and the Rigid had a different design than the others with two large wheels in the back. I like them for moving from one place to the other, though they weren't quite as easy as the others about following you around when in use because they only had two wheels on casters as opposed to four. I did like that you could lock a wheel on the VacMaster 14 gallon which kept it in place, something that the others didn't have. The VacMaster 14 gallon was also the best for tool storage as it had a place for every tool and it was also good with cord and hose management. The worst of all these in terms of design was the workshop which did not have a place to put the hose or a place to wrap the cord and it barely had enough room for all the tools. They were all about the same with noise level, with the notable exception of the workshop, which was louder and more high pitched than the others, and it was quite noticeable, almost a deal breaker by itself. I tested their filtration and found no real difference between all five, though some advertise slightly better filters than others. Finally, the price. They are all very close to the same price, but as of today, this is how they line up from the cheapest to the most expensive. So putting all this together, I think the Craftsman wet dry vacuum is the best overall and best value. It also happens to be one of the most popular and well rated wet dry vacuums online. It has the most power, all the tools you need for the most common jobs, and each tool is well designed. It has a lot of the basic design issues worked out, such as good tool holders, cord and hose management. It's not particularly loud. It did admirably on the water test, all the pickup tests, including being the best with heavy debris, and it's one of the cheapest on the list. My second place goes to the Rigid, and my third place goes to the VacMaster 14 gallon steel drum. Links in the description to all five vacuums, and be sure to subscribe to Vacuum Wars before you leave. Thanks for watching.